There's this big debate on whether the brain is computational or whether it has or utilizes quantum elements. And I've always been on the quantum side of it, and I've been following a theory called or core, which stands for orchestrated objective reduction. And this was put forth by the famous physicist Sir Roger Penrose and Dr. Stuart Hameroff, who is a anesthesiologist. So the classical explanation of the brain and consciousness is that it's produced through neurons interacting and, and those are considered to be bits or like uh, on and off switches. So this theory suggests that it goes deeper uh, than the neurons. So uh, in the dendrites, there's something called tubulin, which are protein. And these arrange themselves into lattice structures. And this apparently is called uh, microtubules. So apparently the criticism has been that the brain is too warm, wet, and noisy to have any sort of quantum elements, but this theory suggests that there is benzene pockets within these tubulins that, that are hydrophobic, so they basically, they, they repel water, so there is there is specific sort of uh, parts of the brain that have you know, pockets where it isn't too warm, wet, and noisy. So I'm just going to share a video of Morgan Freeman talking a little bit more about the theory because I'm sure that these, these documentaries will be able to explain it better than I can. Years watching over patients in the operating room made Hameroff obsessed with understanding the link between brain activity and consciousness. Then, 15 years ago, he met the great British physicist Sir Roger Penrose. Together, they developed a radical new theory for how the brain works. A theory that has grown into nothing less than a scientific argument for an eternal soul. At its root are tiny structures inside our brain cells called microtubules. If you look inside a cell, you find these structural components that are somewhat like the bones within our, our bodies. The microtubules develop literally a forest inside each cell which determines the architecture and the structure of the cell. And we think microtubules are perfectly designed to be the cell's onboard computer and process information at the molecular level. Hameroff and Penrose argue that microtubules allow neurons and the brain as a whole to function as a quantum computer, performing operations in a fundamentally different way from normal computers. So here we have a brain with two hemispheres. Most views of the brain are of a collection of individual neurons. When one neuron fires, it sends a signal to the next neuron at a synapse. That in turn causes that neuron to fire, and that neuron causes another neuron to fire, much like dominoes. So for example, if a neuron fires here, it's going to trigger its neighbors to fire, sending signals through and around the brain. That's the classical view of how the brain works. In a conventional computer, signals move around from place to place along traceable paths. But the microscopic components of a quantum computer are connected via a mysterious process called entanglement. Some of us think that quantum processes play an important role in consciousness in the brain. So for example, if there's neuronal activity here, it may be coupled through quantum non-locality to processes over here. These neurons are connected even though they're spatially separated so that activity here instantaneously affects activity over here. Hameroff and Penrose argue that a change in the microtubules in one brain cell can affect microtubules in another. But that's not all. Quantum theory claims that every single point in space, even empty space, can contain information. At the very fine structure of the universe, there is information, quantum information, not unlike these dominoes, so that we can have information up or down, here and here, but they're connected, so that something that happens here influences something here. This means the information in the microtubules can connect and become entangled 
with the universe outside the brain. So just like these two neurons may be entangled, it's possible that the information of consciousness of the whole brain is entangled and can exist in the universe at large. According to Hameroff, our souls are built from something much more fundamental than neurons. They are constructed from the very fabric of the universe. I think that consciousness or its immediate precursor, we'll call it proto-consciousness, has been in the universe all along, perhaps from the Big Bang. All of this recalls the Buddhist and Hindu belief that consciousness is an integral part of the universe, and perhaps it is all there is in the universe. If consciousness is a quantum process, it may solve the mystery of what happens during near-death experiences. Let's say the heart stops beating, the blood stops flowing, the microtubules lose their quantum state. But the quantum information, which is in the microtubules, isn't destroyed, it can't be destroyed, it just distributes and dissipates to the universe at large. If the patient is resuscitated, revived, this quantum information can go back into the microtubules and the patient says, I had a near-death experience. I saw a white light, I saw a tunnel, I saw my dead relatives, I maybe even floated out of my body. Now, if they're not revived and the patient dies, then it's possible that this quantum information can exist outside the body, perhaps indefinitely as a soul. Many scientists find it difficult to believe that the soul is a quantum computer hardwired into the cosmos. But Hameroff feels that research is slowly validating his claims. Quantum effects have recently been shown to control several important biological processes, from bird navigation to photosynthesis to the human's sense of smell. So far, nobody has landed a serious blow to the theory. We're still very viable, and evidence continues, uh, new evidence continues to support the ideas that we put forth 15 years ago. So this quantum effect has been shown in things like photosynthesis in plants. So as they say, it, it doesn't make sense that the brain, which is extremely complex, wouldn't make use of this if plants do it. So in this other video, Stuart Hameroff explains the new evidence about the microtubules and how they found that these things contain quantum elements. And then we got some evidence for this from uh, our friend Anurban Banjapati, some of you know him, who uh, liked our, our model. He took one microtubule and, and did nanotechnology and put four different elect nano electrodes on them and uh, two to stimulate, two to record, and they're good conduct, they're good insulators. But when he stimulated with an alternating current at different frequencies, they became conductive. The resistance dropped and became highly conductive at, say, 10 megahertz, 20 megahertz, and also in the kilohertz range. And this was at, at room temperature. And he showed these were quantum effects. And, uh, and then he used 2 megahertz to stimulate the assembly of microtubules. And he found that, that 2 megahertz was the sweet spot to make microtubules grow. So remember, microtubules fall apart in Alzheimer's disease. So this might be useful, right? So he then went to MIT and spent a year looking at the same thing inside neurons with these nanoprobes and found something very interesting. He found a sequence of frequencies uh, from uh, terahertz to gigahertz to megahertz down into the EEG range, all from microtubule vibrations. And in one case, he put uh, from the electrode inside, he recorded music or recorded sound. So hopefully this is going to play. This is the sound of microtubules inside a neuron singing. It takes about a minute and a half. So you can see here he's sweeping the, the frequency. This is down converted because it would be too, fa uh, too fast to, to actually hear. <clears throat> so this gives the idea that there are vibrational resonances going on inside, uh, inside neurons due to the microtubules. So these are measuring from the from the microtubule bundles uh, inside neurons. And these triplets occur every several orders of magnitude. Now the high-pitched one. Hang on. I'm not sure what this really means. Uh, 
but it's kind of it's kind of nice and a lot of people really like it but it's basically this, what's going on inside our neurons all the time due to these vibrational resonances and one point i want to make is that consciousness is more like music than than computation okay so that's going on in the microtubules which is actually connected to, uh, to space-time geometry. Let me just uh, go back to, the, to this one. So what happens if you go higher frequency beyond the, uh, the frequency here, and uh, you get in more and more into quantum, and you become more and more non-local? And what that could mean is that consciousness goes into a deeper level, finer scale level of space-time geometry. And uh, for example, uh, Bing, could go, so here's, here's our scale, and we're going smaller, smaller, and smaller down to the Planck scale, that it, in altered states, meditative st states, psychedelic states, uh, and the psychedelic drugs push the uh, system more into quantum non-locality, that consciousness goes to a deeper level in the structure of reality, which is kind of fractal-like. Or as the Beatles saying, the deeper you go, the higher you fly, the higher you fly, the deeper you go. And I think this is probably true, and actually Deepak wrote an, uh, and I wrote an article about about this as a possible mechanism for uh, out-of-body experiences and po possibly even, even afterlife uh, as a, a speculative uh, uh, suggestion. And it's amazing to me that all of these things tie into the whole afterlife argument and, and apparently DMT and things like that seem to come into the play with that as well. So apparently this theory also suggests that things that we meet in the DMT world might be some sort of I don't even know what it, it, it represents, but it, it seems like it, it could mean that these things are actually real beings in a certain sense. I don't, I still don't ex understand exactly what, what the implications are, but uh, I've watched a few videos where he has definitely suggested things like that. It's definitely really interesting, so I thought I might share this on my channel.